Hello, my name is Blake. We're here in southeastern Michigan. One of the ways I make money is by selling things on eBay. And in this video, we're going to go over things that sell good on eBay uh, and some things that I shouldn't have auctioned off because they were stinkers. Let's go. All right, a few disclaimers. Everything here, it's all used stuff. Nothing is new, no retail arbitrage. And I think the most I paid for any individual item is $9. So everything here is very cheap, very easy for anyone watching this to do. And my hope is that you can learn uh, from my mistakes and my successes to make more money on your own. So the first thing is this vintage Beatrix Potter 9 book lot hardcover classic mini F. Warren and Co. That's a typo, I think. Is that F. Warner? No, it's F. Warren and Co. I got it right. Uh, 1930s to 40s. So I had it listed at one nineteen ninety five. Took a best offer of literally half that. Now, I only had like a quarter into this. I've had these books. Uh, I got them when I was doing pallets of books like three years ago. And at the time, I was only selling books on Amazon. And you couldn't sell these on Amazon. It isn't a complete set. They're very old. And so I just had them uh, in storage, basically. I finally listed them. Within a few days, I got an offer. Uh, on auction, these books would have gone for probably like 35 bucks. So I think getting 60 bucks for it is pretty good. They shipped media mail. That's like four or five dollars. Very good sale. I was very happy with it. I was told that maybe I could have held out for more. Maybe I should have gone for a hundred bucks. Um, but that's not really. I'm not trying. I have so much inventory that I'm not trying to get the best deals and everything. If I can make you know 50 bucks or whatever it would end up being on a sale, I will take it. But what do you think? Would you have held out for more? Uh, would you have said, hey, you know what? These are good books, good condition, good name. Anything Beatrix Potter, there's going to be demand for that. Anything this old for kids, there's going to be demand for that. Um, I'm curious, though. Would you have known what I did or would you have held out for more? Second up is this Tyndale NLT Red Leather Large Print Reference Premium Leather Bible. Uh, and as you can see in the background of that picture, it was not <laughs> a very good picture. Uh, premium leather, any leather Bible. I think that this, I think I probably picked this up in a thrift haul video uh, in the beginning of February. It sold on, let's see, yeah, I, I guess I picked it up end of January. Start time, January 27th. Uh, sold February 13th. So that's just about a little over two weeks. I paid 50 cents for it. Sold for 40 bucks, full asking price. Shipped, media mail. There was a little ding on this Bible. If you can see if that photo will load, maybe it won't load. I don't know. Um, it wasn't in great condition. Like you can, man, that's a blurry picture, isn't it? I don't know if my internet's just slow or if that photo is that blurry, uh, but it proves that you don't have to have perfect pictures. These Bibles are always selling good. Red letter is a good keyword to use. Large print and reference are both good keywords. And then of course, premium leather. This sold overnight, and I think I might have put it too low as a, as a price. Cincinnati Bengals, Youth Hutch Football, old logo. This logo is from 87 until late 90s, um, and I just know that because I like football. And, uh, you know, if the, if the Bengals would have won the Super Bowl, this would have been worth like 200 bucks probably, but they didn't. They lost. Sold overnight to a guy in, uh, in Philadelphia. It actually did ship first-class mail. It only weighed. I put it in a box. Uh, I didn't want it to get scuffed up or dinged up. It only weighed 14 ounces when it was all said and done, so it shipped for like five dollars. Uh, I probably, you know, whenever an item sells immediately, I'm thinking, oh, geez, I, I priced it too low. I paid four bucks for this, maybe less than that, uh, and it sold very quickly. Maybe I could hold out for more, but I think, you know, for my money, uh, for my business model, and as you can see here, I finally have a, a semi decent background. Do I think that made a big difference? No, I don't. I think probably the keyword and the price and the condition were the, uh, the biggest factors in this sale. Next up, you saw me pick this up uh, in a thrift hunt video. Pal Rolo, <laughs> Polo, Ralph Lauren, shawl neck, pullover, sweater, sweatshirt, gray cotton men's L. I think shawl neck is the, is the big keyword here. Uh, it's sold in, I don't know, a week or two. Full asking price, someone just bought it. Uh, it didn't go international. Um, it went to somebody in California and I stuffed it in a padded rate mailer. So it shipped for like $8.45. Uh, I paid five, no, it was half off day. So I paid like two fifty for it, $3 for it. Um, I made about 20 bucks. That's okay with me. I don't know why people like these giant shawl necks. Looks kind of goofy to me, but whatever. I'm not going to turn my nose at 20 bucks profit. This was a cool sale. 
Final Fantasy 7 PC Squaresoft Eidos, four disc CDs with manual and booklet. So it's the PC game uh, for Final Fantasy 7. And it's semi complete. Is that bugging you? Is my is my big old face bugging you? Uh, semi complete. Not semi complete. Totally complete. What am I talking about? Uh, totally complete. Maybe it's not. You t- if you know more about this than me, tell me. Uh, this was listed a long time ago, March 29th, 2021. Sold almost a year later, February 17th, for full asking price. Uh, it went international. So I shipped it to Erlanger, Kentucky, and it uh, it did ship first class mail. So I made about uh, forty bucks. And this is also this came from another pallet sale. I had it listed forever. I couldn't sell it on eBay or on Amazon because there's no listing for it. Just kind of a weird one off sale. Uh, I was the only person who had this listed for years and years and years. So no doubt in my mind, uh, a collector bought this. Next up, this item came from another reseller's mystery box. If you are a friend of the channel, if you go way back, you know who I bought this from. It took forever to sell. Listed November 18th, 2020. Sold like a week ago. New with box. I don't know why I said that. I just copied someone's listing. Obviously, I copied someone's listing. It says same day ship. I would never have said that if I wrote the listing myself. Uh, So I did ship it um, UPS ground. A lot of things about this listing were bad. It did not go expedited shipping. I hope they left feedback. Someone with no feedback bought it. I don't know, man. Um, I am no longer buying mystery boxes. I did it for a video. I would not do it ever again. And not because uh, anyone's trying to scam you. I've sold mystery boxes, but just because... The things you're buying in those boxes are, it's never like the easy wins. It's always the things that sit for, you know, I made 20 bucks off this, so I'm not complaining about that, but it just sat for, you know, two calendar years, (laughs) not, not two full years, but I listed it in 2020 (laughs) back way a long time ago. Next up is a vintage Otagiri Prairie Scene Buffalo American West mug coffee cup. The big keywords here, Otagiri. Buffalo, American West, Uh, just doing the research, I found that those things are good keywords. What happened is this actually auctioned off 99 cents with calculated shipping. And the person who wanted to buy it couldn't get their bid in time. And so he messaged me and said, hey, Blake, can you sell this to me for like 15 bucks? And I said, yes, I can. So I listed it at $4.95 free shipping. It shipped first class mail because this was a very light mug. I think it weighed about six ounces by itself. Um, if you can tell in my hand how small it is, maybe you can't tell, but it was not like a big Ray Dunn mug. I think all packaged up, it weighed about 12 or 14 ounces. So it shipped for under $6. Uh, I shipped in a six by six by six cube, lots of bubble wrap, lots of void filler. Uh, I have not gotten feedback yet, but I'm sure if the buyer, uh, if it breaks in transit, I'll just, I'll refund them. I'll say, Hey man, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I did what they told me to do in, in terms of packaging and it, sometimes things just break, but I don't think, I think it's going to be fine. Um, I did the drop test, didn't break in the drop test. So everything should be okay. Uh, on a $15 sale, this mug, if you recall, I bought it in a lot of four for $2. So I paid 50 cents for it uh, and it shipped for fourteen ninety five, or, or sold for fourteen ninety five. dollars shipped for like six bucks. Not a very big profit amount. But um, the reason I bought that was because it came in uh, the, one of the four mugs I bought was a Ray Dunn mug. So ended up uh, being okay. Here's a mistake I made. Ha! A mistake. Um, hand-painted, blown glass, 8-inch vase, roses, white polka dot, art, vintage, unique, floral. All the keywords, tons of pictures. I think good pictures. Measurements, everything you could ever want. Hand-painted, vintage, hand-blown glass, beautiful. 146 page views, a lot of page views, I think, for an auction. One bid! One bid. They paid shipping. Um, I only paid like $10. So I made like, I, I think I, I think I paid $2.99 for this. So I lost a little bit of money. Shipped it uh, with a lot of bubble wrap, uh, a lot of void filler. I really, fingers crossed, hope it's okay. They will tell me if it broke. I know they will. And I'll refund them. Um, it was a learning experience. I don't care that I wasted, you know, 10 minutes of my time or a half hour of my time listing this, 
bought in the video. I think it's nice. I think that's really nice. Went to someone in uh, in Arkansas. They paid, yeah, like twelve fifty nine, which is a good deal for them. I better get good feedback. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. If you bought this before you give me bad feedback because it broke in transit, tell me, and I'll refund you. Uh, because I tried my best to give it layers and layers and layers of protection. But uh, you never know. I shipped at UPS Ground. I've heard that UPS Ground's better than the post office in terms of being, you know, careful with fragile items. But I don't know. Here's an item that I auctioned off that I was actually happy with. Uh, so I sell tons of sterling silver jewelry. I buy estate sales out, that kind of stuff. This is a five gram pair of cat earrings. Is that, it's not like, I guess it is etched maybe. Um, I think they're more in, in, in well, it's either cast or etched, but whatever. Yeah, it's cast. I'd say they're cast sterling silver. Very shiny. Uh, it almost looks like fake sterling silver, but it's not. They were tested. They're stamped all over the place, 925. So these, in, in terms of scrap price, are worth about, you know, 250 maybe a quarter more than that. I got 638 plus 495 standard shipping. That's going to pay for the envelope, pay for everything, more than the cost of just shipping. So when it's all said and done, uh, over the, the, the cost of scrap, I made about two or three times that. Uh, in, in its own isolated bubble, not a very good sale, but when you're doing off, I, I, I only auctioned off like 15. I'm, I'm kinda, I used to do this all the time. I used to run hundreds and hundreds of auctions on a different eBay account back, back in the day. Um, when I was like 20 years old, it was like my full-time job was auctioning off jewelry on eBay and selling on Etsy. So I'm very well versed in this and I'm kind of seeing like, hey, is the market there? Uh, because I don't know, I'm looking for new ways to or old ways to, to make more money. And this was cool. Uh, cats, I think were the big keyword. I auctioned off a lot of jewelry that just did not go for anything beyond like one bid. It was generic stuff like hoop earrings or just like basic um, cursive spell out rings. All that stuff is not really worth selling on auction. What I would do if, if you have some, um, auction it off in a lot together and you'll get maybe like 20% over scrap price, maybe. Uh, but what I would not do is just auction off the individual rings. That used to be okay back in like 2016. You could make some money doing that. But from what I've seen, not anymore. There's just too many people who are, who are not buying this jewelry to wear. Uh, and a lot of people who are sniping these auctions who wait till the last minute and they're going to pay 99 cents and you're going to you know, at best, at best, break even. Next thing I auctioned off, uh, a static 64TS box turntable cartridge stylish vintage record player for parts, condition for parts not working. I paid, I think, five bucks for this. Uh, went for 99 cents plus 4.95 shipping. Went to an international buyer. Both the uh, auctions, the next, well, the next one you're going to see went for to an international buyer. I believe guys in Japan, based on their name and their username and their eBay profile, um, this I bought it because I, I, you know, it's old. I, I whatever. I paid five bucks for it. Lost money on this. That's okay. I don't know anything about this kind of stuff, but now I do. Um, I chalk it up to a learning experience. The next auction I went, I went. Uh, let's see, Renette Phono Fluid DC, and I got these keywords just off existing listings. So I don't actually know anything. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just copying um, what someone else wrote for the same exact part. And I made sure to take a good picture to show the condition of everything because you don't want to get a return on this kind of stuff. That would really be terrible. This sold for $11.50 plus shipping. So when, when they're both said and done, I made maybe like a dollar <laughs> after, you know, two bucks after all the fees and everything because they did only ship for like $3.50. Both went to Erlinger, Kentucky. Both weighed under an ounce or under uh, four ounces, I mean. So now you know, if you see a box of old record components for like 10 bucks, buy them all and auction them off uh, for parts or not working because there is a market for that. Now here's the two biggest sales, or at least the two sales that I thought were coolest. Not the most expensive sales of the past two weeks, but uh, ones that I think are the coolest. This one, 1971 Gary Barks Tree of Life Wall Hanging Art Litho. 19 and a half inches square amazing patina patina is what you call just like when something's old <laughs> you call it patina and i i learned this actually was a tiktok i made too or was in a tiktok very popular tiktok apparently the words love are somewhere in the branches and i i don't see it 
Uh, but apparently the word love is written like four or five times in these branches. And this was a common piece of art in a lot of people's houses in the 70s growing up. I had never seen it before. It was very striking to me. It looked very good. I just liked, liked the image of it. I'm looking for any letters at all. I can't see anything. Um, I had it listed. I took an offer. I took five bucks off. So I had it listed at $69.95. I took an offer of 65 bucks in like an hour, in like a half hour. Uh, and then I had calculated shipping. Uh, I went to a guy in Virginia, I, if I recall correctly. And uh, so he paid just south of a hundred bucks when it's all said and done. And I paid, I think, nine dollars in the store. I might have paid less. If you want to know for sure, go back and rewatch the whole Thrift Hunt series. Uh, this was definitely one of those pickups. And I even made a little, a little funny uh, seller note. This item has been knocked around the Midwest for fifty years. It has some dings, but it also has character. This has the best patina I've seen yet which is true i did love it's like nothing i couldn't think of anything that more exemplifies the like the wall art from the 1970s than this and i didn't even know what it was i just know these colors are uh exactly what they look for you see do you see pause the video and look for love in the branches do you see it anywhere i don't maybe that person lied to me i don't know i don't know and finally, our biggest sale, another auction, a lot of 16 MP3 CD audiobooks, CD J.D. Robb, which is Nora Roberts' alter ego, I learned, Romance, Suspense, In Death series. Sold on auction for $177.50 plus $9.95 economy shipping to a buyer in Chicago. Probably somebody who loves these books, listens to them all the time on their way to work. Who knows? Uh, but they paid easily what I would get if I did a buy it now. If I sold these off individually, I would have got probably about 170 bucks. So I am very, very happy with this. Very pleased with the auction. Um, when I when you have a large lot of audiobooks, paperback books, whatever from an in demand author, so like Stephen King, or like uh, let's see. George R. R. Martin or anyone. I mean, there's there's hundreds of authors who are gonna have value in lots. Auction them off. Uh, I've been auctioning off Barbie DVDs. I've been auctioning off Disney DVDs. All that kind of stuff. You're not gonna get the most if you were to sell them individually, but you're gonna make way, way, way more per hour of work. Uh, I think it's it's a, a no-brainer. Um, I paid I paid fifty cents per, so I paid eight dollars for all of these. I mean, really, a huge, a huge profit on auction. Sold in a week. They paid right away. No issues with non-paying buyers. Um, all in all, very, very pleased with this. So if you like these kinds of videos, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what your best sale of the past two weeks was. Uh, any questions you have, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.